السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عباده الذين اصطفى وبعد All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless him and all his companions And to grant every single one of us goodness Beloved brothers and sisters Not only have we completed 20 of the chapters of the Quran and not only have we completed half of Ramadan and not only is the culture in this part of the world of the buba and the, the milk that we normally distribute in this part of the world but inshallah from tomorrow the recitation shall be slightly shorter in that we will be reading one juz a day from tomorrow not that it will make a very big difference, but the reason I'm making mention of this is because do you realize this month is almost over? Now then the other day, we had started it. We saw the moon, we were standing here. And it seems like a few hours and we are already more than halfway down this month. Subhanallah. So let us make the most of it. Sometimes shaitan comes to us and makes us feel a little bit lazy. Believe me, there's not much left. Very little left, so don't be lazy. This month, wallahi, we might not see the end of the month. And wallahi, we might not see another Ramadan ever. Allah might decide to take us away before that. So let's make the most of this and let us turn our lives. If Allah has given us a gift before we meet Him, before we pass away and we go to Him, that He softens our hearts and we become from those whom He has befriended, what more do we want? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept us all. We were speaking yesterday of Yusuf alayhi salam, the Prophet Joseph, may peace be upon him. How the wife of this person who had purchased him, had bought him, had evil intentions and how a little child bore witness or a little shahid, a little depending, there are different narrations as to who and how it exactly happened. But the moral of it is he was innocent. And the man knew that this young boy is innocent. However, this woman was definitely one who controlled her husband. She controlled him such that even the innocent were made guilty for him. I would like to draw an example. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us forgiveness. As you know, we are currentizing the lessons in order to see how they apply to us in my life and yours. Many of us have people who work for us in the home or at the workplace. Something goes missing. The first thing we do, I think she took it. Astaghfirullah. Doesn't it happen? Why does our mind go in that direction? Sometimes we blame them. We fire them, not realizing in the eyes of Allah, they were always innocent. So without evidence, we should not speak. And we should not doubt without evidence. It is very dangerous. It is critical. If we are to doubt people with no evidence, there will come a time when people will doubt us without evidence. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. So in the same way that we are hurt when we hear how an innocent man was made to look guilty and he was a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how many of us are guilty of making the innocent look guilty when it suits us to do that. So it's important for us in the homes. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaks of how to treat those who work for you. إِخْوَانُكُمْ خَوَلُكُمْ جَعَلَهُمُ اللَّهُ تَحْتَ أَيْدِيكُمْ فَمَنْ كَانَ أَخُوهُ تَحْتَ يَدِهِ فَلْيُطْعِمُهُ مِمَّا يَأْكُلْ وَلْيُلْبِسْهُ مِمَّا يَلْبَسْ The Prophet sallallahu speaks about how to treat these brothers of yours who happen to be working for you. Yes, it also applied to those who were slaves at that time. But today, the rule would apply to us for those who work for us. They are also human beings. If Allah wanted, it could have been the other way around. Maybe our offspring might be working for theirs. Who knows? So this is why it's important that justice prevails even at the workplace at all times. Now Yusuf alayhi salatu was was made to look like the evil one. And the rumor started spreading around. Rumor started spreading around the town. The women of the town and the gossip of the women. Allah says, وَقَالَ نِسْوَةٌ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ امْرَأَةُ الْعَزِيزِ تُرَاوِدُ فَتَاهَا عَنْ نَفْسِهِ قَدْ شَغَفَهَا حُبَّا 
إنا لنراها في ضلال مبين The women of the town began to talk that this wife of the Aziz, the wife of the leader at that time who had purchased this particular slave, he, she is trying to indulge in the wrong act with this particular youngster, trying to pull him through and so on, and definitely she is totally wrong. She has been blinded by her own desires. Now when she heard of this, she decided to teach them a lesson. She knew that they did not know how handsome he was. So it is reported that she got some fruit or something that they could hold with knives and she decided to have a party for them and she let this young boy walk past them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, فَلَمَّا سَمِعَتْ بِمَكْرِهِنَّ أَرْسَلَتْ إِلَيْهِنَّ وَأَعْتَدَتْ لَهُنَّ مُتَّكَأً وَآتَتْ كُلَّ وَاحِدَةٍ مِّنْهُنَّ سِكِّينًا وَقَالَتْ اِخْرُجَ عَلَيْهِنَّ when she heard of this, she prepared a place, she invited all of them, she gave them a knife each and so on, and she told him, come, come out and I want to parade you, walk from this end to that end. When they saw him, they were overtaken by how handsome he was and they exclaimed whilst they were busy cutting, not realizing they were cutting their hands and they said, wow, this is not a human being, this is an angel. And in the process, they cut their hands. Allahu Akbar. It was better for them to lower their gaze. And from this we do learn something. When people do not lower their gazes, when people do not understand what it is all about, there was a young man, and I've given this example here before, whom I was speaking to, and he tells me, you know, when you have something and you are happy with it, you buy the latest car, latest. The example I gave a few days ago here was that of a Mercedes. And I said, you have the latest Mercedes. For you, it is the latest until you don't know how to control your eyes. And you start looking at even a later Merc. And then yours means nothing. Allahu Akbar. So when you get married, mashallah, it's the latest. It's your choice. Alhamdulillah. Keep your eyes with blinkers and inshallah it will remain the latest forever. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. May he grant us understanding. I see the young boys here, mashallah, smiling. May Allah grant you spouses who will be the latest at all times. Amen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open our doors. Here what happened, Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam, he was innocent. He was forced to do something. These women, if any one of them looked down, they wouldn't have cut their hands. It also, also shows us that when you do not control yourself regarding the opposite sex, you will be hurt. And you will be affected and inflicted with damage and with disease. It's very apparent and clear from this. If you control yourself, you will be saved. And this is where we have all these diseases of the age. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from all the STDs and HIVs and AIDS and what have you. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us upright lives. Wallahi, we achieve nothing, nothing by engaging in immorality. Absolutely nil. Imagine you've engaged in immorality. It was very amusing. It, it was meaning one enjoyed it for a little while. After that, you grow old, your bones start aching. And now you're lying on your deathbed and you're busy thinking of the sins you committed in your life. Was it worth it? The answer is no. But still Allah is most merciful. And he says, if you've realized, even at that point, we are ready to forgive you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all forgiveness. So Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam thereafter, the plan was hatched and she told him, you must come. Now it's over. This is it. You have to come and engage in what I am saying. Do you know what he says? He made a dua to Allah. He raised his hands. She warned him, if you don't do this, I'm going to get you jailed. Remember, we said yesterday she told her husband, what is the punishment of someone who intends evil against your own wife? So he had an option of jail or committing the action. And who was she? She was also very good looking, very wealthy, very high standing, high status. There was lots of privacy. Every point was 
taken care of in the sense that if someone wanted to commit a sin this was the ideal opportunity but he raised his hands Allahu Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Yusuf alayhi salam made this dua that, Ya Allah, for me it is better to be jailed than to engage in this sin. For me it is better to be jailed than to engage in this sin. And if you, Ya Allah, are not going to keep it away from me, then I might fall into a trap and become from amongst the ignorant. What do we learn from this? My beloved brothers and sisters, it is important. We make dua to Allah constantly to save us from sin. Ya Allah, safeguard us from shaitan. Keep us away from him and keep him away from, from us. Because Ya Allah, if you do not keep shaitan away from us, we as human beings may falter and then we will be regretful. So we make dua to Allah to protect us from evil. That is also a sunnah of the Prophet Another thing we learn, Whenever there is sin that is facilitated for us completely and the only thing that is blocking us from committing it is the fear of Allah, we arrive at a new level of spirituality. This is why Rasulullah speaks of seven categories of people who will be shaded on the day of Qiyamah. One of them is Rajulun da'athu imra'atun dhatu mansabin wa jamalin faqala inni akhafullah. A woman or a man who has been called to commit a sin by a woman who is very, very good looking and at the same time she has high ranking and high status in society. Everything is facilitated. But he looks and he says, Inni akhafullah. I fear Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us steadfast. Those are the deeds that will come to our rescue after we've died. Those are the deeds that will grant us Free entry into paradise by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah to grant us paradise without reckoning. We know that there are going to be so many people who will be entering Jannah. Bila hisabin wala adab. Without accounting, no punishment, no nothing. As we normally say through the green route. They walk straight out and they're gone. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those. So Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam after that. He was jailed. When he was jailed, he was literally, the sentence was passed against him. These women bore false witness and he was jailed. From this we learn that those sitting in the jails, and we'd like to dedicate a little bit of time for those sitting in those correctional services. I call them this afternoon correctional service depots. May Allah protect us all. Those who are seated there, we know that sometimes they are innocent. Some of them are innocent. Not all of them are guilty because look at this. The witness was guilty of bearing false witness. We ask Allah's protection. When Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam entered, Allah says, وَدَخَلَ مَعَهُ السِّجِنَ فَتَيَانِ There were two youngsters who entered the jail with him. As soon as they looked at him, they seen this man, he looks to be a very, very good man. So look, the character, the conduct, the appearance, the mannerism, the etiquette of an individual should be able to tell the rest that this person is good. The way we behave, the way we speak, the way we act, our character, our conduct, our iman must automatically reflect upon us to the degree that those around us should be able to say, rajulun salih. By the will of Allah, this looks like a pious man. Or this looks like a good woman. So this is what happened with Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam. As they were entering, these two men recognized him. They'd seen him. The first one says, Oh Yusuf, I have seen a dream in my dream. I saw that I was squeezing some juices. I was squeezing wines. And the other one says, I saw a dream that there was a loaf or a bread on my head and the birds were eating from it. The birds were eating from it. Please 
can you tell us what is the meaning of this dream? You look like a good man. Allahu Akbar. That means he was very helpful. Now, I'd like to spend a moment again to say, when a person is sentenced to a jail term, don't lose hope. It's not the end of the world. Those better than you have spent time there. May Allah protect us. So Yusuf alayhi salam, he did not get depressed in the jail. He spent quite a bit of time in the jail. He did not get depressed. He used the opportunity for da'wah. He used the opportunity to call people towards Allah. He used the opportunity. Now I was good. I had good character, good conduct. I'm now in the jail. These people have asked me a question. I need to make sure that I use the opportunity to explain to them a point or two before I give them the meaning. So he sees the opportunity immediately. You see, when we looked at the story of Nuh, the prophet Noah, may peace be upon him, we found that he used every means at his disposal to call the people to Allah. And we heard about it. So in our times, it would be our duty also to use every means at our disposal to spread the message. Whether it is a tweet, whether it is a message on the net, whether it is a message with any other media, whether it is a call in the masjid, whether it is a madrasa where we are teaching directly, whether it is a newspaper article, whether it is a radio program, no matter what it is, whatever you can do, please engage in it because the opportunities of calling people towards Allah are limited to your life. And even in your life, they will be limited to your capacity and capability. So when you have it, don't waste it. May Allah open our doors. Yusuf salam was not going to languish in that jail forever and ever. No, when he was there, he made sure this is a chance. There's only two people, but let me try with them. Subhanallah. So he says, قَالَ لَا يَأْتِيكُمَا طَعَامٌ تُرْزَقَانِهِ إِلَّا نَبَّأْتُكُمَا بِتَأْوِيلِهِ قَبْلَ أَن يَأْتِيَكُمَا he says, don't worry, before the next meal, I will tell you the meaning of your dream. But in the meantime, between now and then, I want to talk to you about something. The first thing I want to talk to you about is how Allah has blessed me. I am the son of Yaqub, who is a prophet, who is a son of another prophet, who is Ishaq, who is a son of another prophet, who is Ibrahim, Allahu Akbar. And he's making mention and he says, many people are ungrateful of what Allah has given them. Many people do not know and they are ungrateful of what Allah has bestowed upon them. So look, the most noble, when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, who was the most noble of the prophets? Obviously, after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this nobility is being spoken of lineage. He says, well, if you look at Yusuf alayhi salam, and I made mention of this a few days ago, he is a Nabi, son of a Nabi, son of a Nabi, son of a Khalil. The level of a Khalil is higher than a Nabi. It's a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam. What a great lineage. Yet he was still in the jail. Allahu Akbar. This shows us that when you are going through something negative in your life, it's not a sign that Allah is angry with you. Not always. It is the condition of the heart that determines that. If you are going through goodness and your heart is not content, there's some problem with your spirituality. And if you are going through test after test where limbs have been amputated, people have been lost in your midst, your loved ones are gone and so on, and you are still saying, Alhamdulillah, it's not a punishment, it's a test from Allah, and you are passing it and you are now going on to new spiritual levels. So Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam, subhanallah, he says, oh my companions, I want to tell you these are the gifts of Allah upon us. And you know, a lesson we draw from that, no matter what your lineage is, it's not going to help you, neither in this world nor in the next. It might have a temporary assistance for a moment, for as long as people are looking up to it. After that, you're on your own. You're on your own. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells his wife and his daughter, may peace be upon them all. La amliku anki min Allahi shay'an. I don't own anything for or against you with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you are responsible for your own deeds we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the intercession of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so it's important for us to know this Yusuf alayhi salam then says Ya sahibai oh my companions look at how beautifully he's calling them beautiful words oh my beloved two companions of the jail my comrades who are seated here 
المتفرقون خير أم الله الواحد القهار Is it better to worship so many little deities and gods or is it better to worship the one who made you the supreme, the most powerful? Who is better to worship? So he engaged in a discussion. Look, all the prophets called towards Tawheed. They called towards worshipping one Allah. And we've stressed this. This is why I say, mashallah, in Cape Town, we have a city which is known as the city of the reciters of the Quran. Together with that, we want to make it a city of the understanders of the Quran. Amen. So we want to marry the two. And then inshallah, we will be able to be a beacon of light in this world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us. Wallahi, you want the best Qurra, in my opinion, come down to Cape Town. You will have powerful reciters. Now we also want people who can understand the Quran as powerfully, bi-idhnillah, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because wallahi, even if you just read the stories of the prophets and look at their messages, it will solve your problems. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us solution to all our mess. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thereafter speaks about how this Yusuf alayhi salam gave this da'wah and he spoke to them. And whether they accepted or not is not mentioned. We don't know. But he tells the one after that, after he makes mention of it and he says, look, don't worship more than one God. Worship whoever made you. Same message as Ibrahim. And he says there that I have my forefathers, they have trained us one after the other and they have made sure that every one of us know that you only worship one God, your supreme deity and nobody else. Whoever made you, whoever created you, you put your head on the ground solely and only for him. After that he says, Ya sahibay sijni amma ahadukuma fayasqi rabbahu khamra wa amma al-akhar fayuslabu فَتَأْكُلُ الطَّيْرُ مِنْ رَأْسِهِ قُوضِيَ الْأَمْرُ الَّذِي فِيهِ تَسْتَفْتِيَانِ Oh my comrades in this jail, the first one of you, you're going to be let free and you will be serving the king here and you will be squeezing all his juices for him. That's the interpretation of your dream. And as for the next one, very sadly you're going to be crucified, executed and the birds will eat from your head. Now, before they could say, no, 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 I didn't see that dream. Because what happens sometimes to people, when you're told, hey, your dream means you're going to be doomed. They say, no, but I didn't really see that. <laughs> because they, they're really scared, they're worried. And they're thinking to themselves, now, what if this really does happen? So before that, al amru. He said, look, the matter has been decided, it's over. Whether you now say you've seen it or you didn't see it, that is what is going to happen. And I've been informed this through inspiration. So then he looks at the one who was going to be released and he says وَقَالَ لِلَّذِي ظَنَّ أَنَّهُ نَاجٍ مِّنْهُ مَذْكُرْنِي عِنْدَ رَبِّكِ He says, look, you who are going to be let loose, you're going to be free, you're going to be there with the king. I'd like you to make mention of me with him because you know I'm an innocent man, you know I'm a good man, you know what has happened. Try and mention my name there so that I don't have to serve such a long sentence and so on. Allah says, فَأَنْسَاهُ الشَّيْطَانُ ذِكْرَ رَبِّهِ فَلَبِثَ فِي السِّجْنِ بِالْضَاسِنِينَ You know in the excitement of being let free, he forgot. He forgot about the man in the jail and he was gone there and so excited. Sometimes we promise people things and then in the excitement of the moment, we forget completely what we promised. In that case, write it down. It doesn't mean you're becoming old. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So, here we learn something. To help someone come out of the jail is also an act of worship. To serve those who are in the jails is also an act of worship. The hearts are the softest when a person is serving a jail sentence. They might be very physical at the beginning, but when they realize there's no way I'm going besides within this parameter of whatever it is here, they soften up, they cool down. So, we are now addressing those who are serving sentences in the prisons and I know they are listening to me because I get messages from them every other day that we are listening to you. Subhanallah. The message is, seize your time whilst you are serving in that place 
and make sure you leave the place having earned as much as you can from that particular prison. If there are people around you who know a little bit more, go to their feet and try and learn. I have visited many prisons in this particular country and we've seen good Muslims who are there. Some of them are huffad, they know the Quran and they are busy teaching the others Quran in a manner that when some come out, they now know more deen than when they ever or before they went in. The same is happening in the United States and in other countries where people are being softened towards deen and religion. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us opportunity to serve. There are prison boards, ulama and people who are voluntarily working. It's our duty to support them because we don't know tomorrow I might be there, you might be there sometimes for no reason. As we said, just like Yusuf alayhi salam was there. It doesn't mean we have forgotten them. We pray for them. We try our best to also remember them. We send messages to them. We will try to help them. We will try to teach them. And at the same time, within themselves, they best use that time in a way, in a manner that will be more beneficial. Because there's only one chance you get. I know in the UK and in other places, they have courses that you can do, even here in this country. Courses, varsity degrees. You can start in the jail. And if you're serving a seven-year sentence, you might come out with a PhD. May Allah protect us. Now we want to use that for an Islamic cause as well. Remember, if you come out, now you are a hafiz of the Quran. It was worth that sentence. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness. Remember, we need to make dua for one another. And on this day, we make dua for all the inmates. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on them to open the doors for them, the brothers as well as the sisters who are in the jails. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open the door for them. Going back to the story of Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam, one day the king sees a dream. وَقَالَ الْمَلِكُ إِنِّي أَرَى سَبْعَ بَقَرَاتٍ سِمَانٍ يَأْكُلُهُنَّ سَبْعٌ عِجَافٍ وَسَبْعَ سُنْبُلَاتٍ خُضُّ وَأُخَرَ يَابِسَاتٍ يَا أَيُّهَا الْمَلَأُ أَفْتُونِي فِي رُؤِيَايَ إِن كُنْتُمْ لِلرُؤِيَا تَعْبُرُونَ The king sees a dream which was very weird because he saw seven thin cows eating up seven fat ones. Now it's supposed to be the other way around. So this didn't make sense to him. And then he'd seen seven dry corns and seven green ones and this for some reason made him think he got up and he felt that this is now a message so he asked his people oh my people please can someone interpret this dream what did they say <laughs> they said nah this is just a nightmare it's just a dream it's one of those weird dreams that everybody dreams may allah grant us goodness i want to pause here for a moment when we dream our dreams nine times out of ten are connected to what we were thinking about, what we've seen, what we worried about, what we have been pondering over and so on. Nine times out of ten, it's just like a sixth sense, you're sleeping and now you've seen certain things not really connected to any message and so on. So there are some people who get excited. Every little dream, they want to jot it down and pretend like it's wahi that came from Allah. No. Let's not get too excited about dreams. It is a disease to get excited about dreams. But at the same time, if you have a dream in the last hours of the, of the night, meaning the time of tahajjud, slightly before the fajr time, and it bothers you, and it repeats itself, it's recurring, most probably you should ask someone its meaning, but with the following conditions. Firstly, do not spread that dream around to everybody. I had, I had this dream, I had that dream. No, it is only for you, and for someone you trust with interpretation. So you will ask them, look, I've seen this dream. It's really bothering me. Would it mean something? And you get a good interpretation. And believe me, if you've asked more than one person, the narration of the Prophet ﷺ, he says, most probably the first one you asked will be true. So you better ask someone who's at least got some positive thinking. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Thereafter, you have a bad dream that someone had seen. You are supposed to slightly spit on the left three times, say, A'udhu Billahi min ash rajim turn the other way and go and sleep. And if you'd like, in the morning you can give out a little charity and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects us 
through the, the blessings and mercy that he sends when we give out a charity. Now, this dream, nobody knew the meaning. After some time, this young man remembered, hey, there was someone who interpreted my dream and it was true. It was true. So let me go to him. I ask this king, do you allow me, give me permission to get back to the prisons? There is someone who can help us. So he was sent. Yusuf, oh Yusuf, my beloved friend, he's come back. After some time, he came back. Yusuf says, yes, what is it? Aftina, we want a fatwa, meaning we want an interpretation of this dream. And he related the dream. And he says, this is what the king saw, and this is what happened. So Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam immediately responded. قَالَ تَزْرَعُونَ سَبْعَ سِنِينَ دَأَبَا فَمَا حَصَدْتُمْ فَذَرُوهُ فِي سُنْبُلِهِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا مِمَّا تَأْكُلُونَ ثُمَّ يَأْتِي مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ سَبْعٌ شِدَادٍ يَأْكُلْنَ مَا قَدَّمْتُمْ لَهُنَّ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا مِمَّا تُحْصِنُونَ ثم يأتي من بعد ذلك عام فيه يغاث الناس وفيه يعصرون. He says, oh, listen, you are going to have seven years of very good crop and produce. You should save as much as you can in these seven years of good produce because after that there is going to come seven years of drought when nothing will be produced. So you will have to use whatever you've saved and you'll have to bring it and after that it will return back to normal you'll have a year flourishing so this man ran back to the king and he interpreted it and the king says where did you get it from he says well there's a certain man now look look now he remembered there's a man in the jails and from that man he gave me this so the king says the king says call him bring him here take him out of there he's not supposed to be there we want him to come here and we want to talk to this man it makes sense what he is saying when the messenger went to call him, he said, Masha Allah, this is my opportunity to clarify my name. They accused me of committing a sin. Go and tell that king of yours that what happened to those ladies who cut their hands and all those witnesses who were bearing witness against me, were they false or were they true? Find all that out and then come and see. Come and get me after that. What do we learn from this? Whenever an innocent man has somehow been looked upon as guilty, there will come a time when Allah will give him an opportunity to clarify his name. So you don't have to worry. Allah is there. People, people talk, people say, people spread rumor, people want to gossip, people want to send SMSs and people want to send emails and people want to do all sorts of things. No problem. If people are accusing you of something that you are not guilty of, Allah will give you the opportunity one day, sooner or later, inshallah, for that name to be clarified and cleared by the will of Allah. Don't worry. They don't own any of your bread or butter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us bread as well as butter. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this in the Quran. And then when the messenger came back, the king had no option but to call the queen and to call this woman and all the others and to say, look, what happened exactly? Let us know. Let us know because now we've got some serious matter that has come here and we need this man and we need to clear his name. So now the woman had to literally put her tail between her legs and come and surrender. Al-ana has has al these are the moments of the truth. I was the one who was guilty of trying to lure him. He is completely innocent and honest and he was truthful always. Subhanallah. Look at the clarification of the name. And after that, Yusuf alayhi salam is called into the palace. So what happened? He says, he says, listen, the best for you to do is make me in charge of the granaries, what we would call maybe the minister of agriculture or something of that nature, in charge of the, the production, the produce, the granaries and so on. 
and I will definitely look after it. I am an honest, upright human being. Inshallah, you will find me to do a good job. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. We learn from this that when we are employed, we must fulfill properly. When we have been employed to fulfill a job, we must be honest and we should fulfill it bearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in mind without cheating, without deceiving. No, not at all. We should not deceive or cheat the system around us just because we are in a position where nobody is going to catch us. Allah is watching and Allah knows there is no barakah, no blessing in that wealth that came to you through deception. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to get rid of that type of wealth and protect us from it. So after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the years continued, the seven years, mashallah, the granaries were full, full, full. And he had devised a plan and a system where thereafter when the drought started, people would come in certain system and they would collect their rations. Each male must come himself. He must pick his bag up and go. Subhanallah. And after a while Allah says, now look at how the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam, they were also affected by the drought. They were also affected by the drought. And this was many, many years later. It is reported that more than 30 years later, this happened. Because he was a youngster. Now he grew up. He spent so much time in the jail. His father on one hand is making dua. Ya Allah, unite me with my son. Ya Allah, unite me with my son. Allahu Akbar. So Allah says, وَجَاءَ إِخْوَةُ يُوسُفَ فَدَخَلُوا عَلَيْهِ فَعَرَفَهُمْ وَهُمْ لَهُ مُنْكِرُونَ The brothers of Joseph, may peace be upon him, walked in. He immediately recognized all of them. They were ten. He recognized all of them. They didn't know who he was. Because when he had seen them, they were already adults. But when they saw him, he was a child. When a child becomes an adult, the features change. You have, mashallah, a beard and you have different features and they look at you and say, oh, it's you. And so on. That's if they're lucky. Otherwise, they won't even tell. So Yusuf, alayhi salam, he didn't make them feel bad, but he went there as they wanted to collect. They had to pay a certain amount and collect. So as they were making their payments and so on, he looks at them and he starts asking them questions. Who are you? Where do you come from? They started saying, we are the children of the prophet Jacob and what have you. And how many brothers are you? Well, you know, we are 11. They missed out one completely. He was in front of them. We are 11, but I only see 10 of you here. Well, you know, the one is at home and so on. No, you must bring him. You will not take his ration. You're not allowed. He must come in person to collect his ration. Otherwise, we're not giving it. So he hatched that plan. They understood it and so on. And after that, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the wisdom of Yusuf alayhi salam. Look at how wise he was. He didn't make them feel unwanted. He didn't remind them, yeah, you the people who threw me in the well. You did this. You know nothing of that nature. That's all gone because Allah has already raised him far above them. Far above them. Their plan was his downfall. Allah says, hang on. It is through your plan that now he will go far beyond. And remember one thing. We must mention this. One negative thing happened. Two negative things happened. The first one was, he was taken by his own brothers. They were planning his killing, his death. Secondly, they threw him into the well. Thirdly, he was picked up by people and considered merchandise rather than being set free. Fourthly, he was sold. Fifthly, the person who bought him maltreated him. Sixthly, they had a court case against him. And after that, he was actually proven guilty when he was innocent. And over and above that, the seventh and eighth point, he was jailed. And it was so bad. And on top of that, when he told his man to remember him, that man forgot. So eight or nine bad things, one after the other. Imagine if it had to happen in our lives. I think the bulk of us would say, hey, someone's been to visit a witch doctor here. They're engaging in magic against me. I can feel it. I've just got a spate of bad luck. That's the type of statements we utter. Wallahi, very bad. Why don't we understand it's from Allah? Make dua to Allah. Now when the doors opened, look at how one by one they all opened. From the prison, straight to the seat. Allahu Akbar. Straight to the seat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deeper understanding. So thereafter they went back to their father. And before they left, Yusuf alayhi salam quietly whispered in the ears of some of his men. That look, you know, the merchandise that these people have brought, 
don't worry on the house which means you know I'll pay for this and so on you put it back into their bags before you seal the bag and then seal the bags and let them carry it so he put back the merchandise he sealed the bags and they went when they went home ya abana muni amin al kaylu fa arsil ma'ana akhana naktal wa inna lahu lahafidun oh our father we have been prohibited from this one measure because we didn't take our brother with so send the brother with and we will protect him هل آمنكم عليه إلا كما أمنتكم على أخيه من قبل. The father says, "You want me to trust you with him like I trusted you with his brother before?" Simple question. فالله خير حافظا. Allah is indeed the protector. يعقوب عليه السلام. He knew that there is something hatching here. Anyway, they they were now quiet. They didn't know what to say. They started opening their bags. Hey. They noticed there's all the merchandise in the bag over and above the grain. Ya abana ma nabghi hadhihi bida'atuna ruddat ilayna wa namiru ahlana wa nahfadu akhana wa nazdadu kayla ba'ir. Oh our father, what more can we ask for? Here's all this merchandise is back in here. We can take it and go and give it back to them and on top of that we will get another measure. Now at least they were honest. They wanted to now return it because they said, look, this is not ours. We're supposed to return it. So let's get back there. And they told the father that we will at least get one more measure. So we are going to go there. Send him with. So the father says, لَنْ أُرْسِلَهُ مَعَكُمْ حَتَّى تُؤْتُونِ مَوْثِقًا مِّنَ اللَّهِ I am not going to send him with you until you swear by Allah that you are going to bring him back to me. Unless you are surrounded. Unless there is something beyond your control. So Allah says, When they had promised and sworn by Allah, still he made a dua. He says, only Allah is the one whom I lay trust in regarding what you have said. What do we learn from this? When you've lied once, the next time no one believes you. You see that? They lied once when they took Yusuf alayhi salam. Now they are telling the truth. Nobody believes. So this is a lesson for us all. Let us stop lying. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us truthfulness. May Allah forgive our shortcomings. May He make us from those who have no reason to lie. I know there are some who say, ask no questions and you shall hear no lies. I've heard that before. But... To be honest, we need to tell the truth no matter what. Speak the truth. Otherwise, remain silent. It's better for you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deeper understanding. Because it's your reputation that is at stake. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَمَّا دَخَلُوا عَلَىٰ يُوسُفَ آوَىٰ إِلَيْهِ أَخَاهُ These brothers were coming in. And just before they walked in, there is one point I need to make mention of. Yaqub alayhi salam says, Oh my children, I have a piece of advice for you. What is the piece of advice? Ya bani la tadkhulu min babin wahid wa dkhulu min abawabin mutafarriqah Oh my sons, there are going to be 11 of you. Huge, handsome boys. All entering from one door. Children of Jacob. There is a possibility the evil eye might overtake you as you're walking in. So don't walk in all together from one door. I want you to walk in from different doors, two from here, two from there, two from there, and enter from all different doors. People mustn't recognize you and see and say, <gasps> you might be affected by the evil eye. Allahu Akbar. This is what we learn from Surah Yusuf as well, that don't intentionally give people the chance to affect you by the evil eye. Even for them, sometimes it's unintentional. And what is the evil eye? The hadith says, al haqqun. The evil eye, it can happen. It occurs. How does it occur? When someone sees something that they like and they don't relate it to Allah. So you see someone very good looking and you don't say, MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah, SubhanAllah, Tabarakallah. There's no name of Allah made mention of. And you just gulp and that's it. Ooh, did you see that? So suddenly as he's turning his vehicle, it's now creamed on the side. Allahu Akbar. Why? Because they looked at it and they just said, Ooh, what a car. But they didn't say, MashaAllah. Now this we learn, and it's important for us to learn it at this point. Always, never affect people with your eye as well. 
Remember you see a little child, mashallah, cute. Don't you say cute? No. Say mashallah. Say alhamdulillah. Tabarakallah. And so on. Now for your information to protect yourself from that. You read Ayatul Kursi three times every morning and evening. The last three surahs of the Quran three times every morning and evening. With one or two duas. A'udhu bi kalimatillahi tamati min sharri ma khalaq. I seek the protection of Allah from all the evil that he has created. And I seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection completely. We read that dua morning and evening. We will be similar to he who has a metal armor around him against black magic, against this type of the evil eye, against all these things. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the strength to read it morning and evening without being lazy. It doesn't take more than 10 minutes of your time, but it protects you until nightfall. And if you read it in the evening, it will protect you until the morning. So it's important for us to know this. So the children walked in, two from there, two from there, two from there, and Yusuf alayhi salam sees them. He's seen these, and he knew automatically all these are connected, they are my brothers. So when he got a chance with his one brother, he looks and he says, Inni ana akhuka, fala tabta'is. Don't worry, I am your brother. Don't worry what they are going to do. We've hatched a little plan. I am Yusuf. And you know what? Don't worry, just play with the flow. Which means I've hatched a plan to detach you from these, and inshallah, it will work. You pretend ignorance. So Yusuf alayhi salam is now planning against his own brothers. There was a time when they were planning against him, but they were planning evil. Here he is planning something good. He wants his brother. He must have missed his family for so long. He doesn't know yet whether they are softened or whether they are still hard. In the sense that if their hearts are softened or if their hearts are still hard against him. So, when he had given them their due, he quietly placed the gold mug of the king into the sack of his brother and it was sealed. And as they were leaving, an announcer called out, Hey, you people are thieves. What? They looked back. They said, We are not thieves. قَالُوا تَاللَّهِ لَقَدْ عَلِمْتُمْ مَا جِئْنَا لِنُفْسِدَ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَمَا كُنَّا سَارِقِينَ They said, by Allah, we have not come to your land to cause corruption. And we are not thieves. قَالُوا وَأَقْبَلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ مَاذَا تَفْقِدُونَ قَالُوا نَفْقِدُ صُوَاعَ الْمَلِكِ وَلِمَنْ جَاءَ بِهِ حِمْلُ بَعِيدٍ what a beautiful story being related by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is it that you have lost? They ask. So the response is, we've lost this mug of the king. And whoever comes with it shall be rewarded. Whoever finds it will be rewarded. And the person who's stolen it obviously will be penalized. So they ask a question. What do you think should be the punishment of the one who has stolen the mug? They say, well, no problem. You keep him. You imprison him himself. So now Yusuf alayhi salam is happy. And he starts looking. And they, his, his men start looking into the sex. And intentionally, intentionally, he doesn't search that sack first. He starts off with the one, so they're happy. The next one, they're happy. The next one, they're happy. He finishes all ten of them, they're happy. And then he comes finally to the last sack. And they're about to say, you know what? You see, we told you, we're not here to steal. And he says, here you are, here's this, here's this mug. Allahu Akbar, they took it out. Now the brothers are looking at their brother. And what do they think? They think he's a thief. They think he's a thief. So what happened? They look and they say, What a bad statement. They said, if he stole, we want to tell you, O leader, that his brother was also a thief before him. They don't know they're talking to him. Yusuf alayhi salam kept it. Asarraha Yusuf fi nafsi. Walam yubdiha lahum. Yusuf alayhi salam kept that intact. Imagine if it was one of us, we'd say, hey, 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 guy, guy, listen, relax. That's what would have happened. But with him, no. He kept it relaxed inside. He says, no. 
قال أنتم شر مكانا. Within himself, he said, "Nah, these people are worse than him. They are in a worse condition." Now they looked at him. They were worried because amongst themselves they promised their father, "We are going to bring this brother back." Now they say, "Allah Akbar." قالوا يا أيها العزيز إن له أبا شيخا كبيرا فخذ أحدنا مكانه إن نراك من المحسنين. Oh Aziz, oh you who is a leader here, we want to tell you that we have a father who is a very old man, شيخا كبيرا. He is an old man. So why don't you release him and take one of us in his place? Today, they are ready to give one of themselves in the place of the one who is truly found guilty in this sense, according to them. But at that time, they were ready to sacrifice their own brother for nothing, no sin of his. So they're learning their lessons slowly but surely. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is panel beating them into the right direction. Now you find these people, mashallah, they are ready to give them. So what does what is the response? Maad Allahi an nakhuda illa ma wajadna mataana inda inna idal zalimun. How on earth can we punish someone who did not commit the crime and leave the one who is guilty? We are not people who punish the innocent. Yusuf alayhi salam himself was punished when he was innocent. So how would he ever punish someone who is innocent? He says, we won't do that. We would be oppressors if we did that. Anyway, now there was a problem. Because the oldest brother, he said, you know, I really cannot now go home. Because we, do you remember what we told our father? We told him and we swore by Allah that we are not going to come back except with this brother. Now the brother is not there. How can we return? I'm not coming back. You people go back. Irji'u ila abikum faqulu ya abana in abna kasaraka. Go back to your father and tell him the truth. That look, your son is a thief and he stole. Wa ma shahidna illa bima alimna. And we have not witnessed anything but what we know. We know. Allahu Akbar. وَاسْأَلِ الْقَرْيَةَ الَّتِي كُنَّا فِيهَا وَالْعِيرَ الَّتِي أَقْبَلْنَا فِيهَا You can ask anyone, they've seen what happened. You can tell your father that ask the village, ask these people, ask the caravan, ask anybody who came with us, they all know the story, this is what happened. Now, when they went, the answer of Yaqub, Jacob, may peace be upon him. He says, بَلْ سَوَّلَتْ لَكُمْ أَنفُسُكُمْ أَمْرًا فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ عَسَى اللَّهُ أَنْ يَأْتِيَنِي بِهِمْ جَمِيعًا He says, now he's lost three children. Two were gone and the one refused to come back. He says, my patience is very beautiful. I have hope that Allah will bring back all three of these children to me together. I have hope. So the brothers are still saying, Tallahi taftau tadkuru Yusufa hatta takuna haradan aw takuna min al-halikin. As for Joseph, may peace be upon him, you don't even have to bother mentioning him. You're not going to see him and he far away. It's gone. That story is over. And this father says, أَعْلَمُ مِنَ اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ I know from Allah what you don't know. What was that knowledge? The interpretation of the dream. It still has to come true. The young boy told me he saw a dream. That means Allah will raise him high above everybody. I still need to see it. And inshallah tomorrow we will get to see how it unfolds and how it ends. And thereafter we will move on to some other prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until we meet again.